Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? So I might sound a little different. I'm trying out another Bluetooth. Um, I did a test on it. It actually sounds pretty clear. But um, I'm getting ready th this next week. Uh, me and my wife are going to be taking a trip. And it's a trip to help a friend of ours move. She's moving to Arizona to take care of her mother. And so we're going to be uh, driving. There's a possibility we may have to drive two U-Hauls. We don't know yet. Um, so I'm trying out a new Bluetooth that will last longer than my other one. My other one doesn't last very long. We'll see if this one will hold up and last longer um, so that way I can use my phone while I'm driving hands-free. Um, and I'm going to have a surprise video for you while we're on that trip. I'm not going to tell you what it's going to be, but you'll know it when you see it. And I'll actually give you a heads up the day that it's going to happen. That way you can keep an eye out for it. Um, it's going to be pretty good. So this morning, we're going to be reading out of Exodus 28, 28, the iniquity of the holy things. Sorry, 28, 38, the iniquity of the holy things. So, the whole verse says, So it shall be on Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things, which the children of Israel hollow in all their holy gifts. And it shall always be, <coughs> excuse me, shall always be on his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. And this is interesting. Let's see what he's talking about here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so it's a bunch of statutes that are being given. We'll start in verse 33. And upon its hem you shall make, the pom make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around its hem and bells of gold between them all around. A golden bell and a pomegranate. A golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe all around. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers, and its sound will be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he may not die. So this was the robe that the high priest would wear at this time was Aaron. So when he went in the Holy of Holies, they had a rope attached to his foot. So if they didn't hear the bells, the bells stopped, because one of the things that they believe is that the Lord is always moving, so they would always be moving. So when he was in there, he was moving, he would always be moving. And so those bells were always tinkling. If they ever heard him stop, they'd pull that rope and pull him back out of there. So he wouldn't die. Because the glory of the Lord was that powerful. In the Holy of Holies, it was concentrated. And so it very well be, he might be overwhelmed by it. So the Lord was helping them out with this. You shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engraving of a signet, holiness to the Lord. And you shall put it on a blue cord, that it may be on the turban. It shall be on the front of the turban. So this is this is interesting. It's, there's a plate. A plate, a gold plate, with an en engraving saying holiness to the Lord. It's on the front of his turban. So it shall be on Aaron's forehead, this plate, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things, which the children of Israel hollow in all their holy gifts. And it shall always be on his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. So this is something that was supposed to represent something. The, the, the iniquity that is contained within the gifts they give. I, get, I don't know if that would be like pride or something like that. I'm not 100% sure what that would be referring to. But this is something that is going to be presented there at all times. You shall skillfully weave the tunic of fine linen thread. You shall make the turban of fine linen and you shall make a sash of woven work. For Aaron's sons you shall make tunics, and you shall make sashes for them, and you shall make hats for them for glory and beauty. So you shall put them on Aaron your brother and on his sons with him. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister to me as priests. And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. They shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they come into the tabernacle of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister to the holy place, that they do not incur iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever to him and his descendants after him. So this is something that was going to last for a long time. Now our focus is this iniquity of the holy things for our devotion. The iniquity of the holy things. What a veil is lifted up by these words, and what a disclosure is made. It will be humbling and profitable for us to pause a while 
and see this sad sight. The iniquities of our public worship, its hypocrisy, formality, lukewarmness, irreverence, wandering of heart and forgetfulness of God. What a full measure we have we there. So this is what this plate was representing. And, and the fact that it was engraved with a tool, which the Lord didn't like, it was one of the big things he was against with them engraving stuff or, or using human tools on there, the human works, human effort. A lot of it, if it was going to be done, it was supposed to be done somewhere else. But this is something that was going to represent this. It was going to represent what, what was in people's hearts when they stood before the Lord. We all are guilty of it. This is a very interesting topic. A very interesting topic that needs to be covered because this is something we all endure. This is something we all deal with. Every one of us has this in one degree or another. Our work for the Lord, its emulation, selfishness, carelessness, slackness, unbelief. What a massive defilement is there. This is why we pray, Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. This is why this is something that was in the New Testament. Help our unbelief. Because even though we believe there's still unbelief there. Even though we trust there's still distrust. Even though we walk in faith there's still a lack of it. We're human. We're in flesh. Our private devotions. Their laxity, coldness, neglect, sleepiness. And vanity. What a mountain of dead earth is there. These are our works. Our works are filthy rags. If we looked more carefully. We should find this iniquity to be far greater than appears at first sight. Dr. Payson, writing to his brother, says, My parish, as well as my heart, very much resembles the garden of the sluggard. And what is worse, I find that very many of my desires for the amelioration of both proceed either from pride or vanity or indolence. I look at the weeds which overspread my garden and breathe out an earnest wish that they were eradicated. But why? What prompts the wish? It may be that I may walk out and say to myself, in what fine order is my garden kept? This is pride. Or it may be that my neighbors may look over the wall and say, how finely your garden flourishes. This is vanity. Or I may wish for the destruction of the weeds because I'm weary of pulling them up. This is indolence. So that even our desires after holiness may be polluted by ill motives. Here's that interesting, t t this topic it's interesting understanding. What are your motives? What is your driving force? What's, what's driving you to do the things that you're doing? This is important to God. What you're doing is, 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 is diff, doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Why you're doing it is what's important. Because two people can do the same thing for two completely different reasons. One reason would make it honorable. One reason wouldn't. Under the greenest sods, worms hide themselves. We need not look long to discover them. How cheering is the thought that when the high priest bore the iniquity of the holy things, he wore upon his brow the words holiness to the Lord. And even so, while Jesus bears our sin, he presents before his Father's face not our unholiness, but his own holiness. Oh, for grace to view our great high priest by the eye of faith. I love, love these devotions. And in many ways, most of the things we do that pertain to God every day have tinges of um, pride, tinges uh, of, of carnality. But like some of the stuff that we see going on today, what I talked about yesterday, um, they have uh, tinges of, of ulterior motives to why we do them. There's a lot of people that go to church not to worship God. They go worship God, but they don't go there to do that. They have other reasons. There are many, many men that go to church to meet women. There are many we women that go to church to meet men. That's their desire. They're not going to worship God. They're just going because it's a place where they can find somebody. That's their goal. Some go there to get free stuff. That's why you'll, you'll see them one Sunday a month. It just happens to coincide with the Pollock Sunday.
I know an alcoholic that would go because the one church years and years and years and years ago served actual wine. I knew an alcoholic that would go just to get a taste of the wine. That's it. And if he could, he would sneak in the back and get more. I, I went to a church one time, one single time, where they were actually getting drunk. Like the Bible talks about. What is the driving force behind what we do? What are, what are our motives? Because even though we bring the holy sacrifices, praise, honor, worship, thanksgiving, these things most likely and most of the time are tinged with something else. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times when it is not. But we, we're those kind of creatures where we can fluctuate back and forth. And so this is where self-examination comes in. How much of this can I purge myself of? How much of this can I eliminate? And if I can't, I need to go to the Lord and ask him to do it. Lord, I need this removed from me. I don't want to come before you and worship it. And at this, luckily, even though we do, and it may not, it's, most of the time, it's probably not his will to get rid of it. We need these reminders of who we are to remind us to stay where we are. The Lord has imputed his righteousness, his holiness, his purity onto us. And so when the Father looks at us, he sees him. This is what this imputation is for. Because if he looked at us even after salvation and we didn't have the imputation, he would still see us, our depravity, our mistakes, our shortcomings. But he doesn't see any of those because of Jesus. One of the big mistakes we make is that we go through the motions. If you're going through the motions, stop. If you're just going through the motions to make it look good, stop. Go before the Lord when your desire is there to go before the Lord. Because then it's where the purity comes in. And it's not a purity born from you, born from Him. This is where we have to put our faith and trust in Him, realizing that we can't do it. This is why the Lord did this in Exodus. So I told them, I'm going to have you put this gold plate on the front of His turban, holiness to the Lord, and this is going to be a representation. You're going to wear this, and this is going to be a representation of their ulterior motives when they come before me so that it will be accepted. See, the high priest was the representation of Jesus bearing the iniquity of the people, bringing it before the Father. Jesus Christ did that. Back then was before Jesus, so Aaron was the representation until that time came. When we go before the Lord, why do we do it? These are questions we should ask ourselves and be honest with the answer. And there's times where I've started in prayer because I felt like it was something I should be doing. And I stopped and I was like, Lord, I, my heart is not in this. And I'm here under compulsion. And I don't want to do that to you because that dishonors you. I will come back when my heart is ready. And I've ended my prayer there. Just been honest with him and told him. And later, when it was right, I went before the Lord because then I could pour myself out before him. Because then I was going because I desired to go. Because it was right to go. Not because somebody else said, this is what you should be doing. This is the relationship we have with the Lord. It's not just something random. It's not something compulsory. It's not something we do because everybody else does it. We do because we love him and want to go stand before him. Want to communicate with him. Want to learn from him and be led by him and be taken care of by him. Want to worship him, honor him, and glorify him and praise him and thank him. And we know why we're doing those things. You, it's one thing to do those, but not know why you're doing them. When I give thanks, I know why I'm giving thanks and what I'm giving thanks for. When I worship him, I know why I'm worshiping him, what I'm worshiping him for. <coughs> this is a purposeful interaction, not something random that a lot of people do. This is the iniquity he's talking about, the iniquity of the holy things. People are doing it just because everybody else is doing it. I'm going to do it with purpose. And the purpose is to glorify him, honor him, praise him, give thanks to him. 
not something that's going to make me feel better about myself, which is what they teach today. You do that until you feel good about yourself. No. It's not why you go before the Lord to make you feel good. It's not the purpose. We're glorifying him, not ourselves. See, that's that self-worship. That's idol worship. A lot of people do that today. Most Christians do that today. We know a better way. We know the Lord's way. Not my will, but yours be done. So when we come before him this morning in prayer, now we have a greater understanding as to why we do the things we do, say the things we say, even in the order that we say them in the prayer. Why we ask the things we ask, ask in the way we ask them. We start formally and then we go into direct communication. Like we're talking to somebody we know sitting right in front of us. And then we have the formal exit of the prayer. Everything is done with a purpose. Spoken with a purpose. So that we know what we're doing. We realize why we're doing these things. And who it's for. Not just something random like a lot of people do. Not for show like a lot of people do. Not for gain or, or self-expression or elevation. But for his glory. And we're all guilty of this. It's... it's it's funny, it's so bad to say it, but it's normal. Let us be abnormal. Let us be different. Let us take the Lord's example and apply that to what we do. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this word and thank you for this devotion you through this devotion have addressed topics i have never ever heard a church address getting into subjects that are far greater in their implication and meaning than what people give them credit for most of us don't even realize this is even a thing but this is the fallacy of the church this is where we've been failed for a hundred years we've been we've been failed because these things haven't been taught. And the greats of the word, the, 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 the Reformation fathers, the fathers before that, all the early church fathers, stood on this foundation and taught these things. But then everybody that was given it and trusting into the, into the word after that failed. Well, now you're revealing these things again. You're bringing these things out in the open because you're looking for people who are willing to share it. Sadly, from my perspective, anyway, this is just my perspective, it doesn't seem like there's many people that are doing that. I am so thankful that you're allowing me to do this, that you're trusting me to share these things, and I pray that I'm doing them good enough. I pray that I'm doing them according to your will, because I want those that are here to be, to be blessed, and that they would turn and glorify you. This is a, a, a major thing that has been lost to time. And now you're bringing it back to the surface and revealing. What an amazing blessing to have this stuff being brought to the surface and being exposed to it so that we can see it. And of course, over the last four years, you've had to bring us to a, a place where we could receive it. See it, accept it, receive it. Understand it. So that our worship of you is purposeful. That our communication to you has depth to it. It's not just a superficial interaction. It's actually us talking. Because what is a superficial interaction? It's like whenever people are talking in the store and they're just, ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, that's, a, oh, really? That's a, and, and, okay, it's time to go. And then I sit there and I watch them in the store, even standing next to people. It's like, this is, this couldn't be more fake. They didn't even talk, say a word to each other. I don't want our interaction to be that way. I don't want our communication in this prayer with you to be that way. I want it to have substance and meaning so that when we pray, we pray with purpose. We communicate with you. We communicate for a reason, not just the superficial stuff we see out in public. I see how people talk to each other. It's horrible. It's hard to find meaningful conversation because people don't want to have that. Well, Father, I, would, I desire that with you. And I know my brothers and sisters listening 
they desire it too. Because we understand and we've been coming to the understanding through your teaching that this is far greater than just some declaration, than just some statement that we've made. This is a connection, a relationship, an interaction with someone, not just an idea. You are more than what we've been taught. And this word contains more than has ever been revealed to us. What a, what a terrible blessing this is. Because there's truths coming out of this that are shocking. It's the meat of the word. So Father, I thank you profusely for revealing such things to us. And to bring this stuff out so that when we do pray in the mornings and in the evenings... It's an actual, genuine prayer, communication. We see Daniel, and Daniel's prayers were full of meaning and emotion and truth. A true connection. This may have been one of the reasons why he was so beloved. We don't know. But Father, we desire this communication with you because we know through your word that you desire that communication with us. Father, help us to achieve this. Help us to, to establish this. Help us to learn more and become greater in our understanding of what your desire and your will is in these things. So that we may have this close fellowship with you and with each other through the Holy Spirit. We may come together as a family, as brothers and sisters, with our Father and our Lord and the Holy Spirit. The true connection. And so... Whenever those times come, whenever we have the iniquity of the holy things, we may even recognize it and go, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to halfway this. I'm not going to partial partiality in this. I'm going to be all in. Lord, take this from my heart that I may honor you fully, glorify you fully, and be all in and dedicated to all things concerning you so that I don't have or the minimal amount of this iniquity of the holy things even though they are accepted even though the Lord has dealt with us and you see us you see him because he has imputed these things unto us but we also know that you are sanctifying us changing us preparing us for heaven how much of that how much of a glory would it be to you? An honor would it be to you for us to achieve many of these things here? So, Father, teach us. Show us. Make us to be according to your will. So that what we do in this life will glorify you. What we say will be glorifying to you. And ultimately, we will become those Christians you desire us to be. We have a long way to go. We have a lot to learn. But in all of this, no matter what, I pray your will is done over anything else. Not mine, but your will be done. And I ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your great love, your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. I love this. Because we're learning new things. New things are being revealed. Deeper understandings of our Lord and what he wants. And every time I see this stuff start to manifest, it's like, he's getting us ready. He's getting us ready. What does that mean? Time is short. Things changing fast. May we look up. Look up and view our Lord in his glory. And wait for him faithfully, with patience. Doing what he gave us to do. That when he comes, he finds faith in the earth and catches us doing those things he has given us to do. And may we do this in as much of his glory as we can. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name.
and I'll see you in the next video.